Hi everyone! My name is Valerie and I am the Outreach Coordinator for Future Energy Systems. Welcome back to Science Comics, Cars, Engines That Move You, written and illustrated by Dan Zetwalk. And we've already done part one and part two, and now we're going to get into part three. Stroke three. Power. Explosive growth. Summer 1967 outside Louisville. Let's drop her in. Okie doke, now hand me that torque wrench. Here you go, Grandma Lizzie. This engine's a bit different from the one we had in the old Model T, but the basics are the same. Air and gas go in, exhaust goes out. Try and keep the engine from overheating. Still uses spark plugs, but now they connect to the battery. No more hand cranking to start her up. My first love was old blue. Then daddy bought home the Model T. Now my pride and joy, besides you kids of course, is my dear sweet pony car. 1967 Chevrolet Camaro. Can we take her for a ride now? Giddy up! Where are we gonna go? How about a couple buckets of blood? Yum! Click! Vroom! Grandma, I can't believe you come here. All of us car nuts come here. It's the best grub in town. Here, have a skeleton finger to go with that bucket of blood. Custom culture. Big auto companies try to make their cars appeal to younger folks, i.e. cool, but often they're still not quite cool enough. Drivers have been customizing cars since the Model T, but now more than ever, a car represents a driver's identity and personal style. Small bits of self-expression are added. Big changes in the car's appearance can be made overnight. Stock engines are fine-tuned, upgraded, or swapped altogether. Factory bodies are hacked into receiving extreme makeovers. What used to be boring family transporters are transformed into fire-breathing Frankensteins of the freeway. They're known as hot rods. Hot rodders rebuild their cars to increase speed, but also make radical aesthetic changes. Ed Big Daddy Roth captures this weirdo style with his cartoons of wild hot rods and their drivers. The custom outlaw style is soon a part of mainstream music, TV, comics, movies, and fashion. The concept of hacking will come to mean something quite different in the computer age. Hot rodding is invented by kids racing junkyard jalopies across dry lake beds of Southern California. Larry Shinoda and his chopstick special. Shinoda later moves to Detroit and helps design the shark like Corvette Stingray. While hot rodders are into souping up and hopping up cars, there's a new subculture that is more about getting down and cruising neighborhoods low and slow. This street scraping style is perfected by Mexican Americans and becomes a form of cultural expression in many urban communities. The combination of technical wizardry and intense artistry makes these cars beauties to behold. The boulevard becomes a museum of low riders. In fact, this particular car, Dave's Dream, is in a literal museum, the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. David Jaramillo crafted this 1969 Ford LTD into his fantasy ride. Dave dies in a car accident in 1978. His family and community finish his dream, winning awards in his memory. It is said, in the valley, a low rider increases the status of an everyday person the way a quality horse makes a man a cowboy. Engine types. We've looked closely at the V8, but there are an endless variety of engine configurations. Here are some of them. Straight, inline engines, cylinders arranged in a linear row. V engines, cylinders arranged in a V shape. Slant engines, cylinders arranged in a straight line, but tilted to one side. Flat engines, aka the boxer, cylinders horizontally opposed. Rotary engines, Cylinders arranged radically and spin around a central stationary crankshaft. These are mostly used for airplanes and helicopter propellers. Things started to get out of control with the W engines. Who knows what engines the future might hold? The Wankel engine is quite different. Instead of a piston, it uses rotating triangular discs to generate the smoothest drive possible. Once called the engine of the future, only Mazda ever really embraced it. The diesel engine is very similar to the gas engine, but uses a heavier, different fuel. Diesel fuel, when mixed with air, can explode just by compressing it. No spark plugs needed. Diesel engines are found in large trucks, buses, trains, tractors, and construction vehicles. Reaction engines shoot out a powerful stream of exhaust fluids, creating forward thrust, like the jet engine. What 
When people, animals, or vehicles are fast, it's in our nature to try and figure out which is fastest. When cars come along, it's really off to the races. The earliest car races are secret because they're illegal. Soon new cars face off in city to city races. Horse racing tracks start to be used, giving races a more oval shape. These dirt tracks are soon taken over by moonshiners racing souped up factory cars, eventually leading to the formation of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, or NASCAR. Formula One racing is different as a different style in which high-tech specialty cars race on unique circuits similar to city streets. IndyCar races are similar. Their famous race is the Indianapolis 500. Drag racing encompasses lots of styles, illegal and legal, but it's always short, fast, and to the point. Slot car racing is popular, especially for those too young to have a license, and you can do a loop-de-loop. Never satisfied. Selected holders of the land speed record. 1899, La Jamais Canton, driver Camille Genetzi. 1902, Ouf de Pâques, driver Léon Serpolet. 1906, Napier, driver Dorothy Levitt. 1914, Blitz and Benz, driver L.G. Hornstead. 1931, Bluebird, driver Sir Mac Malcolm Campbell, who was knighted after this drive. 1965, Spirit of America, driver, Craig Breedlove. 1997, Thrust Supersonic Car, driver, Andy Green. First to break the sound barrier on land. You remember the Orctor Amphibolus? But there have been many attempts to build the ultimate land water vehicle. 1931, Land Boat. 1942, VW Schwimmwagen, 1961, Amphibicar, 2016, Watercar Panther. One of the earliest attempts had been by Gail Borden's Terra Aqueous Sail Wagon in the 1940s. Borden had much more luck with a different invention. Twilight, October 1966, Parts Unknown. Rory, Mr. Pitfall Drew, drag racer for hire, finds himself upside down. Earlier that day, Nitrogen, oxygen, gas tank removed, thermaline, parachute to slow down, micro turbine, aka rocket engine. Everything's in place. Time for blast off. Hehe. <laughs> Roy has received his rocket engine from the mail order company Turbonique, known as the real life Acme. This makes Roy the real life Wiley e. Coyote. The VW Bug, one of history's most popular and cute cars, is transformed into the rocket-powered Black Widow. She blasts off, is failed by her aerodynamic spins, and is soon hurtling through space. It's the most airborne drive in history, Mr. Pitfall's Drive. Boom! Roy escapes the wreckage unharmed, except for his ego. He does get recognition for his attempt. Starring in a full-page advertisement for Turbonique. All he has to say is, sorry about that. Just like the human body is organized into systems that work together, so is the automobile. Let's peel off its steel skin and take a look inside. Ignition, electrical. With the turn of a key or a push of a button, this system sparks the engine to life and keeps it cranking. This in turn keeps the battery charged and powers the electrical lights and accessories. There are a few typical ways cars are laid out. Front engine, front wheel drive. Front engine, real wheel drive. Midship engine, rear wheel drive. Front engine, all wheel drive. In a manual transmission, you'd use the clutch pedal to disconnect the wheels from the engine and a stick shift to switch gears by hand. Drivetrain and brakes. The drivetrain, which includes the transmission and axles, takes power from the engine and transmits it to the wheels. A series of gears control how fast the wheels turn. Brakes try and stop them from turning. When a car turns, the wheels must pivot at different angles and move at slightly different speeds. See? There's a lot of complex stuff going on beneath us that we don't even think about. Steering and suspension. The steering system will get you exactly where you want to go, and your suspension makes the ride as smooth as possible. There are different types, including luxury air suspension, but these are the tried and true basics. 
Internal combustion engines get really hot and must be cooled. Luckily, the excess warmth can be used to heat the cabin. Cooling and heating. Even if the weather is brutal, you want your car to feel nice inside. The air conditioner and heating system pipe fluids around, which changes the temperature and eventually becomes icy blasts or warm gusts of air blown into the cabin. Fuel and exhaust. A car is much like a human body. Fuel goes in and waste comes out. Energy is created, but much of it goes up in smoke. There have been improvements to make gas burning vehicles less harmful and wasteful, but it's exhausting. And that was part three of science comics, cars, engines that move you. Cars really are like the human body. There's so many systems inside them, I had no idea. Well, make sure you check out the activities below and make sure you join us for the last part of the story. Bye. Thank you so much for watching future energy systems video. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our exciting content. Check out the links below to our website and learning page where you can find activities, learning extension, and more. You can also sign up on the website for notifications for future videos and interactive opportunities. There's so much to learn as we explore our energy future.